So someone was asking about the preparation of soap experiment. Now this goes into the category of question twos. It's in your organic um, section of experiments. So question one being your titrations, question two being your organic experiments. So the preparation of soap, for those that do French, uh, the reaction mechanism is known as a saponification or base hydrolysis of esters. So the process of making soap, your base hydrolysis of esters. Now, the family of esters, you would have studied three reaction mechanisms or three reactions of esters, and they're all hugely important. Uh, the first one being your acid and your alcohol, giving you your ester and water. So say you had an acid. And the next one then is just the reverse of this. So your ester and water giving you your acid and alcohol, like we have up there. And then this one here, your base hydrolysis of esters. Think of the term base. Your base here reacts with your ester. So when you carried out your soap experiment, you use cooking oil, sunflower oil, and they contain an ester that looks like that, but of a mess. But they always give you this. They will give this to you, this formula to you, known as glycerol tristeroid. Then you add in your base, maybe sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, which is milder. They might ask you for an advantage of potassium hydroxide. It's milder on the skin. And all what happens here, it's the same as up in this, this ending bit gets taken off and your Na or your K swoops in. So you'll have C17, H35, COONA, C17, H35, COONA, C17, H35, COONA. And that's why it's a lot easier just to write the three in front of it because it's all the same. So your Na has replaced these boys and then your OH gets attached on to each of these and you get an alcohol. It's the only alcohol in your course that you'll see three hydroxyl groups as your functional group. So the UPAC name is propane-123-triol. Propane because there's three carbons in the longest straight chain and triol because there's three uh, OH hydroxyl groups on it. It's also known as glycerol which is a byproduct of this reaction and making soap and is used in the manufacture of explosives. Yeah, so this is important, your reaction mechanism, ester and base, giving you your sodium salt and your carboxylic acid, which is just simply your soap. That's your soap. And you also get a byproduct, which is your alcohol. So it's essentially the same as this, except instead of an acid, you're getting your soap. And instead of reacting with water, you're reacting with a base, a base hydrolysis, a base with an OH group on it. Uh, your soap itself is made up of two parts and it helps explain how it works. You've got a hydrocarbon part, so your C17H35. We know about hydrocarbons, they're non-polar. So non-polar means they're insoluble in water, but the bit that it's used for in your soap is dissolves oil, dissolves oil or grease in your skin. Whereas there is your polar part because there's charges on it. And that polar part makes it soluble in water, what you want soap to be. And it dissolves your salts. So your salts like Na pluses or whatever, your ions in your sweat. So it's made up of a polar part and a non-polar part. Your non-polar part dissolves the oil, your non-polar oil. Think of, think of your fractional distillation of oil. All these hydrocarbons are non-polar. Well, your polar part dissolves your water and your salts and sweat. I think that's um, that dealt with. Your stages then in your preparation of soap involves a reflux and a distillation. Then we'll see there's filtration as well. So your reflux mixture looks like looks like that. Like always in these liquid condensers, your cold water goes in through the bottom, out through the top. So water goes in through the bottom, out through the top. And then your pear-shaped flask here with your oil oil is just your ester, this boy here, your glycerol tristeroid. So there's your ester. You can repeat it with lard as well. That's your fat. It's still an ester in a solid form. Your base that you may use might be sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. If you use potassium hydroxide, all you do is replace them NAs with Ks at the end. It's the exact same, and that will be your soap. You use ethanol as a solvent, so dissolve this here oil and you use some anti-bumping chips or anti-bumping granules for smooth even boiling on the hot plate or a Bunsen burner, whatever way you like, in a beaker of water. 
So you reflux that for about 30 minutes. The thing about reflux is you're not gonna lose any contents. You're gonna speed up the reaction. It keeps it at boiling point without losing any of your vapor and without losing any of your solvent. So you don't lose any of your solvent, heats up, evaporates, condenses, goes back into the flask. So the important thing here in the questions is you maximize yield. So you get your greatest yield of soap possible without the flask boiling dry. It doesn't boil dry as it condenses back down into the condenser. So you do reflux first and then you set it up for distillation. And the idea in your distillation is it removes your ethanol. You don't want the ethanol in your soap because the ethanol, as we said, it's used as a solvent. If it's used as a solvent, it's going to keep some of that soap dissolved in it. So you're going to lower your yield of soap. So you remove your ethanol by setting up your distillation as follows. Again, your cold water goes in through the bottom or through the top of your condenser. After distillation, whatever's collected is known as your distillate. And this will stay at 78 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of ethanol, until all your ethanol is removed. Um, so if you put in 10 centimeters cubed at the start of ethanol, you should have 10 centimeters cubed at the end. You know, and then you can uh, turn off your hot plate for distillation to occur. What's going to happen then is you're going to have your soap in here, but you're also going to have your sodium hydroxide. You still probably have wee small bits of ethanol and your anti-bumping chips or whatever, but they generally will stay stuck into your flask, but you'll have soap, your sodium hydroxide and small bits of ethanol. So you want to get rid of this because your sodium hydroxide is corrosive. If you look at the side of the bottle, it's corrosive to your skin. So you pour it into brine. Brine just means a saturated salt solution. So you'll have a beaker of water with a load of salt dissolved in it. And then when you pour it in, you'll see the soap precipitates or settles to the top. So you'll get this murky looking soap settling to the top. Once you have that, you carry out either vacuum filtration or suction filtration. Um, and you pour this mixture in through the bottom of your flask or in through the filter paper. Your soap will stay behind in your filter paper. And then you can wash it with ice cold water. Wash it with ice cold water, removes any of that sodium hydroxide. And being cold water, it's not going to be as soluble in cold water. So you'll maximize the yield as, as well. So wash using ice cold water, remove sodium hydroxide, which is corrosive. And prevents too big a loss of your soap. Um, that's really it. The years it came up, 2018 to A, and then full questions in 2014, 2010, and 2006, all question twos. So have a look at them.